what we're going to carry on and do now is mix up the different note values that, we, that we've learnt to create rhythm. Mm -hmm. Now some in instruments, or the, the drums for one anyway, don't have any pitch or have to work, worry about any harmony, they're mainly rhythmic. The guitar has rhythm and pitch, so it's quite difficult trying to learn to play rhythm and change the pitches simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is introduce some rhythms right now quite early on in the course while we're just learning two chords, just A5 and G5, not trying to overcomplicate that at all, but yet used to playing whole notes, half notes and quarter notes. So once again a whole note lasts for four beats because it lasts for the whole of a common time bar. Mm -hmm. A half note is worth two beats because it lasts for half of a common time bar and a quarter note is worth one beat because it lasts for a quarter of a common time bar. So moving on here to exercise four, yep. if you just like to dial that exercise straight up, I'm going to play along with that. And what we've got in this particular exercise is a combination of half notes and quarter notes. There aren't any whole notes in this exercise, but just half notes and quarter notes split between the A5 and the G5. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give that a play and see how it sounds. Here it comes. Okay. <laughs> again. Back to the beginning, that half note, it's two quarters, the half, two quarters, down to G. And from the top, half note, two quarters, half note, two quarters, down to G, two quarters, half note, two quarters, and then our half note. Okay. Very good. So you're quite right. That's exactly how we need to count it. One, two, three, four. And the more you practice reading these exercises, it, it just becomes like learning to read words. Eventually you just see it and it computes in your head straight away without having to calculate it. Which is why we've written in quite a lot of exercises in this particular lesson. What's also, I think, a very useful thing when you start off is to have a look at the videos, as we've discussed previously, listen to what it's supposed to sound like, see how it looks, get used to the sound of the guitar chords, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing then try it out for yourself. However, after a little while, I think it's better to play the exercise first without looking at the video. Really? Why is that? Yeah, well the reason for doing that is, if you, you know, once you get used to, people listen to a lot of music and if they've taken up the guitar or any other instrument, chances are they listen to music anyway. Yeah. They're probably quite musical. Once you've heard the exercise, you might just be able to remember what it does. We want to make sure that you're actually reading it and understanding the notes clearly. So it would be better to actually bring up the exercise Read it through once on your own if, mm -hmm. if you want without the extractor, there's no problem there. Bring up the extractor and play to it and then watch the video and see if that is in fact what you did play. Ah, so you're almost training yourself, Yes. but it's obviously there as an added backup. You should find after a little while that you only really need the videos to just check everything was okay and after you know, a, a certain amount of time you probably won't even need to read the videos at all, or watch the videos at, at all I should say because you, you understand what the music's telling you to do. You can hear the backing track you're playing to anyway and you're away. Okay, and obviously because if we're on stage or if we we're jamming with our mates, those yeah. videos wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be any use to you then. Okay, so all right. So move on to uh, exercise number five. So what's the difference between exercise four and five? Okay, now what we have to get used to again is the way that we can jumble up the different note types. At this stage in time there will only ever be four notes in a bar, that's to say the notes will add up to four beats. Mm -hmm. So there's our quarter, our half and our whole. Exactly. Any permutation that adds up to four beats is all we'll have. But we have to get used to reading different exercises. Once again, you might take up the first exercise, let's say it was exercise four there. You play it quite a bit, you might struggle, you might not. But let's say you struggle, you play it for a little while and then you get it. Mm -hmm. You've been playing it for a long time, you might now be remembering what it sounds like, etc. We want to get you to the stage where you can read it and get it right pretty much first time. So by reading lots of different exercises, although they only contain the same, per, uh, same information, they're just jumbled into different orders, mm -hmm. you need to get to the stage where by exercise seven or eight, or before that hopefully, you can just bring up the exercise, you can just read it yeah. straight off. So we'll have a little look here at exercise number five, which is a sort of variation on a theme of exercise four. But again, it's slightly different. I've got a quarter notes and a half notes, still no whole notes in this particular exercise. But again, the rhythm has been, been jumbled up, and I have to read that straight away and, and hopefully play it correctly, which is what any, any musician would have to do if they were on a session recording a, a, you know, a record or any of that type of stuff. You have to read it 
fairly, you'll probably get a practice go at it, but you need to be able to assimilate the information quickly. Would you almost sort of count it out in your head, sort of yes. have an idea of it? Very good idea one, to count two, the rhythm out. Three and four. Get into the feel of it, tap out. You'll probably notice I'm sort of tapping my foot a bit, or anything that keeps you in time so you know where those four beats are and keep you in rhythm is essential. Absolutely. Well, as we mentioned earlier, let's take maybe take the tempo down a bit. Okay, yeah. 70 fine. BPM? Certainly, that's fine. And this will help us, you know, count it out so we're not rushing ourselves Absolutely. so that you guys can get a clearer idea of it. So here we go. This okay. is exercise five if you're following along with your notes. So it comes in with two quarters on the A5, then our half note, then our half note, two quarters, and then down to G, two quarters, the half, half, two quarters, and back to the beginning. Our half, there's our half again, two quarters, carrying on with the quarters, then the half that's on the G5, and the half again, two quarters. Down to the G5, and we'll finish it at the end of this bar. So I think that would be very useful. Definitely slow it down, even slower than 7C. If, if, if that's what you need to do, mm -hmm. and then build it back up. I think it would be very useful if you practice it down to 60, 70, something of that order. If you go too slow, there's no momentum. Right. You need a little bit of momentum and a kind of natural feel to it. You don't want to be waiting for the next chord to come along, so to speak. Almost something to challenge you, just yeah, that little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. bit, you know. And then start speeding it up. If you've done it at 60, can you do it at 64? Can you do it at 68? and work your way up and maybe see where you can get to before it falls to bits, you know? <laughs> so you can push your way up and that'll help you learn to move your chords faster. It's like anything, if you play with a better tennis player than you, you'll get better. So if you play with the extractor and having started from a point that you can do it, of course, mm -hmm. then move it up a little bit and see if you can keep up. That's, that's also a good exercise to do. All right, well, I'm looking through the notes here. Okay. Obviously, there's loads in this lesson. Quite a lot for people to get their teeth into, yeah. I want to jump to exercise seven, because uh -huh. there's a more different sort of pattern here, and also we've got our whole note there at the end exactly. of the last I'm, bar. Exactly, I'm glad you brought that up, because this is the first exercise where we actually mix all three note types, whole notes, half notes, and quarter notes. So, um, again, if you'd just like to run that through, if we bring up the um, guitar extractor, I'll play along to this one, and it's quite interesting, I find with some students that when they're used to playing quarter notes and half notes, suddenly holding onto a whole note for four whole beats seems like an impossibly long time. Really? Yeah, it seems like, oh, I, sh I should play something by now, and then they play. Uh -huh. But count, stick to your guns, count out the four beats, yeah. and don't play until they're over. Because it might feel a bit weird, cause it, especially because you've gone from a quarter note there in the yes. third bar, the tendency may be to keep going, to you keep want to get in that precisely rhythm. And, and, and decide you think you know what it sounds like, <laughs> rather than reading what it's telling you to play. All right, very, so very important. got to do what we're reading there. I will try and read this accurately and not guess what it's going to do. All right, well, just to let you know. What's going to be up to now, then? We've got two halves. I've taken it down for you to 70. Thanks. OK. That's all right. So, for our benefit, mm -hmm. for our benefit, not for your benefit. Right, of course. <laughs> I know you That's can do fine. it. That's fine. Here we go. Pushing play, we've got our four counts in. So two half notes on the A fifth, down to G, two quarters on the half, back up to A, quarter, half, quarter, here's that tricky bit, and that whole two, note. Three, four. Half note, another half note, quarter, quarter, half, quarter, whole note again. And one more time through, A fifth, half note, Half note, down to G fifth, quarter, quarter. 